Oh no, the library! Oh, God! The full metal boy found out about Marco's research. Something had to be done about it. Gluttony? I smell him. I can smell him. I can taste his stink. Like blood. I still get to eat him right. Oh yes, down to the last strand of hair. Episode 7, Hidden Truths. <laughs> oh man, gluttony is creepy as hell. Just chilling in the sewers. You know how I do. Okay. Did Scar just die? Interesting. So the, the, I guess she's the main villain at this point, at least, wants to kill Scar. Lots of different and competing interests in this show. You have Ed and Al pursuing their own individual visions. You got the military. You have the Ishbalans. You have these villains who are getting revenge against the military. And then you have this woman and her crew, who I guess are not human. So many, so many factions, so many different interests. This case has obviously gotten to be too much for Central to handle. If I can close it quickly enough, I'll be golden. I've got a ladder to climb, and this is how it's done. That's very honest. You may not want to display your ambitions quite so naked. Right, right. We've just received word of an explosion occurring on the Marl River. That's There's no Scar's mistaking it. This was definitely jacket, Scar's jacket. Right? No, no, no. No body, no death. I know how this works. Is he, is he dead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't get to relax until I've seen his body, and that means you don't get to either. I guess we'll get to work then. Great boss, everyone loves him. Looks oh, what like the heck? Away. I didn't get my snack. Yes, I know. Okay. Maybe next time. He's alive. I need to report to father about everything that's happened here. Father, huh? All right, can I just point out, gluttony does not blend in here. This is not convincing. That is not a look. Is that a look that people can tolerate? <laughs> He is certainly wearing clothing. <laughs> oh, Second Lieutenant Ross and Sergeant Brosh, to what do we owe this pleasure? We'll be taking over supervision of Edward Elric and his brother effective immediately. All might not be lost. There's a woman who is well acquainted with the materials in the first branch. <laughs> Something wrong? Why is he sweating? Oh, it's nothing. Although, if you don't mind me asking, oh. why are you wearing a suit of armor? How does everyone not know by now? One thing I've noticed is that people in the in the military, they love Ed and Al. A couple times so far, the show has focused on people's faces while Ed and Al are talking, and it's always like glowing with positivity and warmth. And so I'm surprised, especially given Ed and Al's very special set of circumstances that more people don't know about it. Miss Jessica, are you here? Miss Jessica? Is someone there? Um, oh. Brother? There's somebody under there! I'm so guarded and shell-shocked now after episode 4. I feel like I don't want to meet anybody else. <laughs> like, meeting people is not good. It's just gonna lead to heartbreak. We don't need to make any friends in this world, alright? Except for Alex Lewis Armstrong. He's cool. I thought I was going to suffocate under there! Thank you so much. So, uh, are you Sheska? Yes. And you worked at the library. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff is so beautiful. I've loved books my whole entire life, ever since I first learned to read as a girl. And Joe was heaven! Find you a girl who loves you like Sheska loves books. But I forgot that I was supposed to be working and all I ever did was read. So they fired me. If I don't find another job, I'll never be able to move my poor elderly mother into a better hospital. <laughs> but I'm hopeless. Yeah, I don't trust you. I feel like she's gonna merge her mother with a book. We're gonna get attached to the mother and attached to the books, and then and it's gonna be book mother. What's the trick? What's the emotional trick? The notes really were there after all. Which means they burned up along with everything else. I remember everything that was in them. Would that help at all? Wow. I'm able to remember the content of any book I've ever read. Yeah. It'll take a while, but I could write them out for you. Thank you, bookworm. <laughs> You're my hero. Thank you, bookworm. <laughs> Unbelievable! There are some amazing people in this world! Damn, the fact that Al can say that almost makes me want to cry. <laughs> the fact that he can say there are wonderful people in this world. Here I am thinking this woman's gonna turn her mother into a book. And Al's like, yeah, wonderful people all over. Good guy Al, restoring my faith. Maybe I can love again. <laughs> Come and take a look at them. Written by Tim Marco. 1,000 easy recipes. Huh? 
I almost forgot Jessica's fee. Huh? Withdraw that amount from my annual research grants and make sure Jessica gets it, okay? <laughs> Did he miss a decimal point somewhere? Whoa, how does a boy like that have this kind of money to <laughs> Oh no, really? That's cool. I mean, the funny thing is, when I first saw him take out the thing and write the, the checkbook, Ed doesn't seem like someone who would ever care about money. He has a much higher calling. I feel like someone like that, they're only going to care about being able to pursue their passion and the money is secondary. It's like as long as they can live. It is kind of funny to think about Ed as being rich though. It adds this sort of like young, talented bachelor vibe to him. Ed's passion and drive for alchemy is endlessly fascinating for me because it's something I feel like it's so cool and so rare to have that sort of focus at any age. And it's funny to think about that drive and passion in terms of money because I feel like a really common thing is to focus on money as a goal. Having enough money to live and provide is one thing, but I'm talking about like fantasizing about ultra wealth in the idea that it'll bring you what you want or that you'll have the freedom to not do what you don't want. But it's funny because when I think about that, if I think about like if I had a lot of money, it would create a new problem and a better problem, which is like, well, what the hell do I do now? You know, but I think that's a really worthwhile thing to think about because if you can find that answer, why not start doing that now to the best of your ability based on your means? Riches is sort of a stand-in for having an actual goal of value. It's weird. But Ed's already sort of there, right? He sort of like skipped all that. And obviously, as much as it's a blessing, it's also a curse because he's so fixated on it. I, I don't understand. These are cookbooks. What could they possibly have to do with alchemy? Alchemy is kind of like cooking. Alchemy is a powerful art. It can be incredibly dangerous if misused. Alchemic research is always encrypted. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. And maybe here too. Great. We've got a place to start. Let's do this. See, everyone loves them. Full Metal Alchemist. Sheska. Full Metal Alchemist. Maria Ross and Denny Brosh. Brother, <laughs> maybe we should ask Dr. Marco about this directly. No way! That'd be admitting I was gonna defeat. Suggest that. So this is a contest now? Ego contest. Thanks to the money you gave me, Edward, I was able to move my mother to a better hospital. I really appreciate it. Nah, it was no big deal, really. Have you had any luck deciphering it so far? <laughs> Have you found another job yet? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. It was nice to know that even a pathetic mess like me can help out sometimes. So thanks for that as well. You're not a pathetic She's mess. She's so hard on herself, yeah. You should have more faith in yourself. Thank you, Al. Big Brother Al. What gives, Ed? I told you to give me a shout the next time you made it to Central. Oh, uh, something urgent came up. Sorry. It's just as well. I've been busy too. They talked to Colonel Hughes like he's an old friend. Just how high up are these boys? Pretty high. We've had a lot of cases to deal with lately, and we're still working on getting the Tucker Camara situation settled. Had to bring that up. I was having such a good time. Get out. All our case records were stored in the stacks at that location, and trying to work without him hasn't been a picnic, let me tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh... Hey, Lieutenant Colonel, oh, no. I think I've got exactly the person you guys are looking for. By the end of this episode, her mother's gonna have a private jet. Oh, have faith, just like you told me to. Thank you, thank you. Come on now, right to work. <laughs> That's cool. She may not be thanking us for long. <laughs> A lot of work. See, it's nice what they did for her, right? Like, they gave her some faith in herself. It would be cool if Ed and Al also took that to heart, right? Because they have a lot of guilt about things in their past, but they also are quite kind, it seems, and they are able to do good for people as well. It's a relatable thing. It's way easy to focus on the negative things, and I think that's by design. It's like, we need to prepare for the future, and the positive things are sort of, you know, you can kind of count on them more, whereas the negative things contain lessons that are risks for you in the future. It's like things you've done wrong in the past or things that have hurt you in the past. Your mind will sort of keep them up in the forefront of your brain until you've been able to process them successfully in a way that convinces you that you are going to be able to avoid that in the, in the future, and it's not going to be a major pitfall for you. So they're extra strong, and I feel like Ed especially might suffer from that a little bit. I mean, he's been through massive trauma, so it's totally understandable. But in the past couple episodes, it seems he's been ultra hard on himself, despite the fact that, you know, he probably does a lot of good as well. How did you put it again, Al? I think dedication is a talent all on its own. Very smooth, True. little brother. Very smooth. Well, it's something I always think whenever I see a certain someone I know. <laughs> Book montage. <laughs> it's oddly exciting. I'm awake. I'm sure you were. <laughs> Don't get angry because you can't crack it. Throwing things won't help. We did crack it. Huh? We cracked the code and decrypted the notes. This is the devil's research. Whoa. It should have been destroyed. The main ingredient for a philosopher's stone is human life. 
How could the military authorize research into something so horrible? Just pretend you never heard any of it. Wow. I mean, it's not like the military hasn't been willing to sacrifice people. But that sort of ties Ed back to it a little bit. You know, like he's not really thinking about it. He feels sort of outside of the whole genocide thing. But his independent research just led him right back there. It's a big loss. Where do you go from here? They worked so hard to decipher those notes only to find out that. It disturbs me too, just thinking about it. I bet I'd act the same way. What was that? <gasps> oh, it was nothing, sir! <laughs> most suspicious! Damn, those eyes. They're gonna crack, for sure. You know, Al, it's like we try so hard to grasp the truth, but it always slips away. And now that we finally have caught it, it turns out the truth is too dangerous to hold. <laughs> There's something I've been wanting to tell you for a while. But I guess I've been too afraid to say it. Uh oh. I. Oh, scared me. What's the secret? What do we do? We ignore him, that's what. <laughs> you don't ignore the major. Yeah, they cracked. We're, we're really sorry. Often the truth is more cruel than we bargained for. Exactly. Maybe you'll find the truth hidden within the truth. What you can see on the surface is only a portion of the truth. One of my favorite things about the show so far is those quiet moments between Ed and Al. They're always so great. One thing I like about that scene is Ed is sort of laughing at the fact that it seems like his fate to be tortured with painful truth after painful truth. I feel like that's a reality of life, right? Like if you really want truth, you have to be okay with initial pain. It's like the truth is often initially painful, but I think that there's sort of like this threshold that once you pass through it, it actually becomes more beautiful than ever. Sometimes I think the pain we experience from learning something that feels truthful is like a lie dying, if that makes sense, you know? And the death is painful. My personal feeling is that the truth always feels good eventually if you can get through that pain barrier but it'll be interesting to see what the truth within the truth means here what's this building used for how can you be so sure that's it there's a prison right next door Ooh. what was the main ingredient for a philosopher's stone oh no in the meantime officer speak of this to no one sir and you elric brothers behave yourselves <laughs> <laughs> I knew you two boys. Nice. You were thinking about sneaking into this building and taking a look around, weren't you? Admit it! We were! We were! We promised! Nah, they were. Totally. Although I feel like Armstrong is a good person to have on board. You could do a lot worse. Damn. It's even tighter in here than I thought. I couldn't get through this far if I was regular size. Lucky I've got a small body. He admits it. Oh no! I just <laughs> got myself a tiny little pipsqueak! <laughs> yep. Damn it. <laughs> Cliffhanger. So I really enjoyed that episode. It was kind of an emo emotional roller coaster. There's a lot going on. And two new characters. They're cool because they sort of give us an outsider's perspective on Ed and Al. We get to look up to Ed and Al through their eyes, which is sort of nice. And I think it fits really well. And it's sort of in line with what we've seen so far about the way people respect them. Also some interesting development on the Philosopher's Stone. Nothing is ever as simple as it appears. Everything is tinged with darkness and ambiguity in some way. It's really fun. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's the end of episode. What are we up to now? What is this? Seven? I'll see you guys very soon for episode eight.